Hey, what's going on guys? This is going to be my out-of-box review for the HGUC Moon Gundam. Now, the Moon Gundam is being hailed as the best high grade of all time. An amazing high grade. The most amazing thing that Bandai has ever made. Well, is it? Uh, I'm going to have to say that it is... Uh, Maybe. It could be. It is an amazing kit, to be sure. Is it the best high grade of all time? I don't know. That's kind of hard to say. It really depends on what your definition of best is. Is it an amazing high grade? No doubt. On most people's scales, probably one of, if not the best high grade out there. Yeah, probably. Does that mean that everyone is going to love this kit and this is just one of those kits that everyone in the world has to own? Not necessarily. I mean, people are going to like certain things. This may be a fantastic kit, but not every kit is going to appeal to everyone. So I would never say that this is something that it's that everyone has to buy about this kit or any kit, really, to be honest. But what I will do for you guys today is just give you my thoughts about it and show you what it does. And then you guys can decide for yourself if you think you want to buy one or not. I just want to say thank you first to USA Gundam Store for making this review possible, guys. Check out the link to their site down below. You can get this kit there, of course, and many other kits and save 10% with the coupon code there, ZakuAurelius10. So check that out if you guys are looking for some kits. If you decide you want to buy this or anything else, just check the link down there in the description. Now, let's take a look at what we get all included here with the Moon Gundam. So the first thing that you get is this stand that he's standing on. You get an action base 5 there, which is in like a clear black, and so you get everything included with that. Of course, the arm and all the different accessories for the stand. And then from the stand to the hands, we have a set of open hands here, both for the left and the right, as well as a set of just regular holding hands, both for the left and the right as well. Then we do also have a trigger finger hand as well, which I've just got connected onto the beam rifle here, very similar to the Sazabi's beam shotgun in its kind of overall shape and styling for that. So it's a pretty cool weapon. I like that quite a bit. It's basically just two halves sandwiched together. Nothing really moves or does anything on it, but it's simple. It's cool. It's nice. I like it. And if you guys saw in the unboxing, this kit does not come with any stickers at all. So the green there for the camera and the eyes, that's a green piece of plastic, but you do have the option of using a clear piece as well. Or instead, if you wanted to use this clear piece and then paint that into like clear blue or yellow, whatever you wanted to do with that. We have a couple different connection pieces for connecting the kit onto an action base. You have the connector, which connects like the back of the waist parts there. Or you've got this one here, which will connect into the back of the cycle plates like that if you wanted to have an uh, action base holding the kit up from behind the cycle plates. Then mounted in the back of each arm, we've got the butterfly edge, which is just kind of this knife, which will come out of there. This just folds open like that. And then you've got four of these little beam effect parts, which will plug into there. So that's two for each uh, knife thing. And then there's again, one on each side. So those will just plug into here like that. And it's basically just a throwing weapon. You can just throw that. Or you can also keep this in the back of the arm with the blades just sticking out like that. Something like this, which is definitely pretty unique. That's not something that you see very often. And then around back here stored on the top of his backpack is the beam tomahawk. So you can take this out. We've got a really cool beam effect part for this that just plugs onto there. And it's going to be very similar to the Sazabes, of course. Uh, beam tomahawk, but really nice. It's kind of like a really interesting take on the beam tomahawk, beam axe, like a EFS style beam tomahawk. And that's kind of like the whole thing, right? And then of course we just have all the psycho plates there on the back and there's eight different sections which can be separated and you can do different cool stuff with them but how they attach onto the kit is on these mechanical arms on the back now you have two of these movable ones here so there's one and here's the other one basically that will fold out like that and you have a couple different points of articulation in this arm for moving that around if you want but because the psycho plates are kind of heavy you also get this just fixed pose one. This is essentially supposed to be the same thing even though it definitely looks a little bit different, but this is just fixed pose to keep it in this static position, which is definitely helpful. Now, as I said, you can do some cool stuff with the cycle plates. You can separate them apart by just pulling them out a little bit like this. And once they're all slightly spread apart like that, you can actually then curve it uh, to make a curved shape with the cycle plates as well, which is pretty cool if you wanted to use that, just have it stored like that in some way. That's pretty awesome. And of course you can separate each section by simply sliding it off like that, simple enough. And then that will just fold into there for its, uh, to make just its own separate piece here. And if you take one of the middle two here, which has this hard point in the center of it, you can use one of these included adapters. And we've got two of these adapters actually, so you could do this one for each side. But this just plugs into here and you can basically make it into a shield, which will plug into the back of the arm in place of the butterfly edge, which was in there before. 
And there we go, and it just makes a shield. Now basically you can use uh, two of the cycle plates to make a shield on his arm, which is kind of interesting. It's something I don't really think it's really that cool looking, to be honest. I probably won't do this uh, for any posing of my own kit, but you can do that anyway. Now let's talk about the articulation of this kit. So for the head, he can go all the way up to there, which is very nice down to there and just a lot of fantastic details around on this kit as you'll notice also a severe lack of seam lines which is amazing that's always great news for a high grade in the stomach section this is one area where it's actually pretty lacking in terms of articulation there's not really much in terms of a stomach crunch or side to side band basically you just have a ball joint there at the base of the torso you can kind of move him around a little bit on and rotate him but considering that the backpack is normally going to be pretty heavy with the cycle plates attached onto there uh, you don't really want a lot of stomach crunch there because then it just means he's going to be sinking backwards with the heavy backpack so not too big of a deal it's kind of a give and take there the shoulder joint is pretty amazing because it can swing out to the front like that just a little bit it's pretty nice though and it can also swing that up very high up top all the way vertical like that so really really nice shoulder articulation there some nice color separation up inside the shoulder as well with the gray piece and the yellow piece fitting up inside of there this lower flap of the shoulder armor will also move up and down we got rotation at the top of the arm and a nice double joint to give you a nice full bend there at the elbow. The wrist, of course, just on a ball joint. The front skirts can be clipped apart and separated for individual movement. You have some nice detail underneath there. It's not a separate piece, but at least there is some detail there if you're ever going to look underneath there. The side skirts will move out to about there. Not too bad. And the back skirt, the very Sazabi-esque back skirt, does also have some articulation in here as well. And this actually does have a lot of detail up underneath there. As that's, that's a separate piece, so that's going to look really nice when that's painted and detailed up. Just real quick back up to the backpack. Nothing moves on this. These little thruster bells are just kind of fixed. Not that they don't move at all except for, of course, the mechanical arm, which we talked about earlier. The hip joint is on a track that will swing forward and back for a little bit of added articulation there. Despite the side skirts only going out a little bit, you can get a really far spread here in the hips. And bringing the legs forward, you can get it to just right about 90 degrees. So I think that could have been a little bit higher. That would have been nice. But you get a really nice double joint here in the knee for a lot of really nice separation there. So you get one, two parts actually pulling apart to separate there at the knee, which is pretty fantastic. A lot of really nice detail here with gray bits poking out amongst the white there. It's all really, really nice down here in the legs. This little arrowhead hanging here on the front does also move forward and back a little bit like so. This flap on the back of the leg as well moves up and down a little bit there and you've got some nice detail up inside there. Here is one of the few areas on the kit that you can actually tell there's two different tones of white, kind of similar to an RG. So there's this plain white, which you've got for like the kneecap and this part on the back of the leg. And then the kind of off white, which we've got for most of the armor colors, but you can see there's a very slight difference there which is pretty cool these feet i really like these feet they're narrow and pointy and a little bit of a high heel action going on there just the kind of feet that i like on a gundam really cool they can move side to side at the ankles there no problems at all forward up all the way to there back all the way to there all very nice no toe bend unfortunately but for how far back you can point the foot like that i think it's going to look plenty convincing without actually having the toe bending on its own up underneath the feet as well no hollow spaces full detail up underneath there very nice and one more thing you can do with the cycle plates is just pull them apart there at the center, fold in the tabs to hide those, and then just pop one on top of each other, like uh, making a cycle plate sandwich here. And then you can plug your hoagie just straight onto the back like that, so it's just kind of in its sort of collapsed form. I'm not really sure what you're going to call that, but so let's just real quick recap that. Pretty fantastic articulation all around. Weapons, very cool, some really unique stuff there. Details overall on the kits is just fantastic. Color separation uh, and just little color details here and there, just all molded in the plastic. Very, very nice. Really, what can you say negative about the kits? Uh, not really anything save for maybe the price. The price, it's 3,000 yen is the list price for this, so it's not cheap. That's the price of a fair amount of master grades and a fair amount of real grades as well. So how does this really compare to master grades or real grades around the similar price point uh, just concerning like the bang for your buck how much you're really getting out of the kit because I think it's a lot of people will often compare of like a, a $50 high grade for example compared to what you can get in a $50 master grade and I don't really think that's necessarily fair to compare between lines because different lines are known for different things and really what the price is gonna mostly come down to is how much plastic you get in the box 
So again, if you guys saw the unboxing, it's a pretty good size box and there's a lot of parts in here. And as you can see, just from the complexity of the kit, there's just a fair amount of engineering in there and small parts and all of that. So rather than looking at it and saying, oh, a high grade should cost less than $20, you should just look at it and say, okay, well, here's how much of plastic I'm really gonna get for my 3,000 yen price or however much you're gonna be paying for it. So ultimately, on the issue of the price, is it really gonna be worth the 3,000 yen list price for it? That's really just gonna be up to you. Honestly, I think that it definitely is. I mean, considering that it's a pretty big HG as well, it's a pretty big 144 scale. And like I said, you get a lot of plastic in here, all the clear parts for the cycle plates, uh, some nice effect parts there as well. The inclusion of the stand, the stand is gonna add about 500 yen to the list price of that. So if you imagine, if this kit didn't come with a stand in it, it'd be costing around 2,500 yen. And then at that point, I don't think anyone would really be complaining about the price that much because these days it's not too uncommon to see high grades coming out uh, around the 22 2400 yen price tag so at around 2500 yen is really not that much uh, for a big pretty complex pretty intricate high grade like this and for a quick size comparison here is the real grades Hazabi. now these are both in the same 144 scale uh, and the Moon Gundam is supposed to be a sort of prototype that was eventually developed into the Sazabi. And you can see there is quite a big size difference between them. The Sazabi is just ridiculously huge and it's almost kind of making me wonder if, it's, if the Sazabi is actually in the correct scale uh, to be a 144 scale. I haven't measured it to be sure. I'm sure one of you guys may know for sure. Let me know in the comment section down below. But when we first saw this kit announced, I was excited about how big it was going to be I, because I was assuming that it was going to be roughly about the same size as the Sazabi. So, an and all honestly, I'm a little bit disappointed that it's not bigger than it is. That said, he is still going to be pretty tall compared to a normal 144 scale Gundam just because it has those really huge, almost Katoki style legs on it. So one last thing that I briefly want to touch on is when we first saw this kit came out, I was a little bit put off by the fact of how obviously this was designed by the same designer who did the Gundam designs for IBO. Uh, obviously it doesn't look like it's something from the IBO universe, but you can see so much of the same design aesthetic in this, the details of this Gundam. And I really didn't like that at first just because I just wanted to keep UC and IBO as separate things. I like the Gundam IBO designs. I just don't think that the same designs fit as well within the uh, Universal Century. But now after building the kit and working with it a little bit, it really doesn't bother me as much anymore. Uh, I think it's just because it's been so long since I've built an IBO kit. When we first saw this kit uh, announced, it was just kind of right at the very tail end of Iron Blood Orphans. And I had just built so many different Iron Blood Orphans kits that I was just maybe a little bit tired of seeing uh, the same design aesthetics uh, in all of those. At this point though, so it, it, yeah, it just doesn't really bother me quite as much though, so I'm happy about that. I really like the overall look and details for this kit. It definitely looks like it's something from the Universal Century, but it has a really unique style and feel to it for sure. It's only really now after I've built it that I can really say that I really appreciate the uniqueness of this kit uh, a lot just because of the uniqueness of the weapons and things like I've talked about already. And that's certainly something that was done really well in Iron Blooded Orphans also, having a lot of unique styling and weapons going on of course. So I think in a way it kind of reminds me a little bit of like Gundam Crossbone for example, how it definitely kind of fits into the universe but it has a very different sort of styling to it uh, and it's really just unique and cool in that way. So if you guys get what I mean that is something that I appreciate about this kit and about this design in general and I'm really really hoping that we do eventually get a release of the Vargil as well uh, I assume that that's probably gonna end up being a P Bandai kit I'm not sure but we'll just have to wait and see I'm looking forward to it either way that's it for the review of the Moon Gundam guys let me know what you think down in the comment section below if you have any other questions you can feel free to ask those down there as well thank you again to USA Gundam store for sponsoring the review thank you to you guys for watching and I hope you're having a great day I'll see you next time goodbye Hey! Thanks for watching guys. Remember, if you want to check the kit out for yourself, you can head over to USA Gundam Store. Use that coupon code ZAKUARILIUS10. Save yourself 10%. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time. Bye bye!